The Toronto Blue Jays are currently getting manhandled by the New York Yankees, but it doesn't matter because it's spring training and they had a minor league lineup out there. But one guy who is going to make this team and is poised for a big bounce back season was Alejandro Kirk. And he had a very nice at bat against Carlos Rodon. He went yard and he looks good. So if he can tap back into that power that he showed in 22, that's going to be key for the Toronto Blue Jays going forward. So we'll have that on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Matt Chapman. An extension with the Blue Jays seems more and more likely as Cody Bellinger signed an $80 million deal, a lot less money than we thought he would get with the Cubs. So we'll have that and much more coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, the Blue Jays are currently uh, getting a beating by the New York Yankees, but it doesn't matter because it's spring training. And that that's what happens when you put a lineup full of Peter Vrionis's and Nick Gosses out there. I mean, it's not conducive to winning a baseball game. You might as well have put us two out there, Nick, because the Jays didn't really make a concerted effort to go out there and win this ball game because it's an away game, because uh, it's the first game of spring training for the Yankees. They're looking to really uh, put the foot on the gas here, and they put out their A lineup for the most part. We saw Juan Soto, Aaron Judge in there, Alex Verdugo. Saw some good things out of them. They looked pretty good heading into the season. But one thing that looked really good today for the Blue Jays was Alejandro Kirk, and he He's one for three. I think his day is done right now. But he hit that nice home run against Carlos Rodon. And him tapping into his power that he had in 2022 is going to be huge for the Blue Jays this season. He he could never get going last year. He missed the majority of spring training uh, after the birth of his kid. And he just couldn't get it going at any point. And he had to play a lot with Danny Jansen going out with injury. Might be the case this year again, Nick, but he looked good today, and I'm very excited to see what he can do over the course of a full season. Yeah, it's obviously spring training, so the results don't matter, but the process is what we're going to be focusing on. A quick reminder, hit the subscribe button before we get into it. We're on the road to 12,000. We're very close, less than 300 away. Now, let's get into it. This is going to be key for the Jays, and again, uh, the the roster they put out compared to the Yankees one with Soto, with uh, Rizzo, all, Judge, all these guys, was not very, like you said, conducive to winning, but we saw some very good things, kind of like we did yesterday with Dalton uh, Varsho, and Peter, it's Alejandro Kirk. Now, Carlos Rodon obviously didn't have a great season last year, but he, in his prime, even the year before last year, was one of the best pitchers in the game, a left-handed pitcher. And focusing on Kirk before we get into the other ones, he hit a beautiful home run off of, obviously, Carlos Rodon. And the big thing coming into camp last season was the question mark about Kirk, his preparation. And ultimately, he never really got going, like you mentioned, at all throughout the season. Showed a shell of himself compared to his 2022 and even 2021 seasons. If he can come into camp, and he's in the camp right now, he looks in decent shape, he looks ready to go, and him just getting the reps is going to be very key for him going forward, especially as that tandem is so important with Danny Jansen, who also looks unbelievable. But a home run in his first spring training game is uh, is very incredible, and he is an X-factor for the Jays going forward and both catchers are but especially Alejandro Kirk with the amount of games he's going to end up playing yeah exactly and that's the exact point that we want to hammer here is that he's probably going to have to play a lot of games due to Danny Jansen just not being available in the past few years he hasn't been able to stay on the field and Kirk uh, he's never going to be a 30 home run guy that's not a part of his game but he did hit around 15 in that 2022 season, and he showed some power. He showed uh, that doubles power. He showed some home run pop every now and then. And we didn't really see him lift the ball too much. He hit a lot of ground balls last season, which is, for him, not a recipe for success because he's not going to beat out those dribblers up the middle. That That's just not the kind of hitter that he is. But he can hit line drives, and he can spray it all over the field. And, and him getting the ball in the air is going to be a big key. We're not talking about hitting those moonshot type of home runs. We're talking about hitting the type of home runs that he hit today. And that was a frozen rope that he hit out to left field. It left the ballpark in uh, in like one second. And, and you looked up and the Blue Jays were on the board because of that Alejandro Kirk line drive. And he looked good today. He had a couple of good at-bats. He, uh, he looks to be seeing the ball better. And I think not having that those reps in spring training last year and not being able to get going kind of hurt him. And, and especially when Danny Jansen went out with injury, Alejandro Kirk wasn't playing great baseball, but he had to play every day because who's going to play? Is it going to be Tyler Heineman? 
who can't hit? No, you can't. You can't do that, especially when you're in the middle of a playoff race like the Blue Jays were. So he had to play a lot. His body got worn down, and he never really had the chance to kind of get above water there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do this year, and hopefully Danny Jansen stays healthy, and they complement each other rather than one guy just taking that job and and running away with it. Yeah, and they've given Alejandro Kirk kind of the, the steering wheel here after they traded Gabriel Moreno. They have faith in these guys going forward, both catchers, that is. Maybe they can get, and hopefully they can get an extension done with Danny Jansen. Now, Peter, um, kind of shifting from Kirk as well as just kind of what you saw today from – there's a lot of players playing in unique positions. Again, you have Arelvis Martinez yeah. playing second base. You have Berger playing right field. You saw Davis Schneider, and I believe the fifth inning, make a diving catch in left field. And we kind of predicted that. I think Schneider's going to get a lot of reps in the outfield, specifically against left-handed pitching when one of Varsho or Kiermaier are going to sit. They are starting to uh, kind of groom these guys into their positions, potentially going forward for the Toronto Blue Jays and where they think they want them to be, specifically Arelvis Martinez. I mean, we mentioned it yesterday. Second base seems like he looked very solid. We'll probably have another video of him in the future. Like even though the results, if you look at the box score, he, his plate discipline, which is one of his biggest uh, negatives over the past few years, has looked very good in spring, both today and in yesterday's game. And people are on the Aurelis Martinez hype train, even though he's yet to really do anything crazy. Almost hit a game tying home run in yesterday's game in the ninth inning. But the position you can read into those now, and it's starting to see that. I think we can kind of get a look at to where these guys could be playing in a lot of versatility, specifically regarding, I mean, Barger, Aurelis, and even Apomia Johnny got in the game today, which is good as well. Yeah, and, and Aurelis Martinez, I don't know if he'll make the team out of spring training, but there's a lot of bubble guys on this roster that could make the team, that could potentially snag that final spot, but I think it's ultimately going to go to Santiago Espinal, and that's what I texted to you off camera there. I mean, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of guys with high ceilings uh, that you want to see develop, but you don't want to just stick them at the end of the bench and, and have them be the 26th guy. So there's there's a bit of a gray area there. But Arelvis Martinez did look very comfortable at second base today, and that's probably where he's going to be playing this season. I think that's where the Blue Jays forecast him as a future big leaguer. I, I wasn't too sure about that because there's a hole at third base, and, and we'll touch on that a little bit later, Nick. But uh, he looks very comfortable in there. Uh, David Schneider, I think he's going to play a lot of left field, like you said, against left-handed pitching. And Carlos Rodon, a lefty today, we saw David Schneider line up over there. So I think they're kind of preparing who they believe to make an impact this year just in those positions that they want to see them in. And and I'm good with that. Addison Barger got some outfield reps as well last year, and, and they're kind of grooming him to be that super utility guy. So you you never know. With injuries, maybe one of these guys can come up and make an impact. I think David Schneider needs to get some regular at-bats as well. I, I want to see him get 500 plate appearances this year, maybe 400 as well. But um, I, I just want to see him be a regular in that lineup because I think he makes his team much better. Yeah, and I think Davis ultimately will be. And Eduardo Escobar, a few other things there if you missed the game. Nothing too special on that front. Peter, quickly before we move on to the other topic, um, nothing too crazy out of the pitchers, at least as of the time of recording. Maybe some things will change in the video or as the game goes on. Bill and Francis are putting a pretty rough spot. He looked okay. It's just that the Yankees lineup was very, very good, and he got hit around a little tiny bit. And then Mitch White, who gave up two runs, I believe touched 98 miles per hour, Peter, which we've heard about his heater. A couple of times. Yeah, so yeah. he's looking very interesting, I will say. Again, he still got lit up a little bit. Do you have any very quick thoughts on the pitching? Again, nothing too much here. No uh, surefire major leaguers. Trevor Richards got lit up again. Who knows what he's going to be this season. But our bullpen's pretty much set. I mean, Richards is seen and figured to be a big part of the bullpen, maybe. Not a big part, but a part of it. Uh, any quick thoughts on this before we move on? It's, it was an interesting one for the pitchers. Francis and White are probably going to be battling it out to be that long man out of the bullpen as it stands right now. So I, I like that internal battle. I, I hope the fifth starter spot goes to Alec Manoa and he can regain some of his momentum so those two guys can focus on really being that swing man that Ross Stripling was for the Blue Jays when he was here. But yeah, Mitch White touched at 98. I, I mean, we were ready to write him off last year. I think a lot of fans are still unsure about what he can provide going forward, but 
98 is nothing to laugh at. And he had that velocity later in the year last season with Buffalo when he got sent down. And he's showing that now in spring training. It's interesting. It's very interesting. And they both got a look at the top of the lineup. Bowden Francis faced Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. Same thing with Mitch White. And and they kind of got smacked around there. But those are two of the best hitters on the planet. You're not expecting them to pitch in those high leverage situations. You're expecting them to get outs against maybe the bottom of the order, maybe in mop up duty. But if you can have a long man with that kind of stuff, like 98 miles an hour or a curveball like Bowden Francis has, then it's very encouraging for sure. Yeah, and Mitch White will be an interesting guy to keep an eye on. I mean, 98 is uh, that can play for him, especially depending on what his role is going forward. So let us know what your thoughts are on yeah. that, and uh, and let your thoughts are on the game. And maybe the results will change a bit as because uh, while we're recording, it's not a sixth inning. But let's quickly touch on Chapman signing incoming. Now, whether it's to the Jays, we're unsure. But Peter, it seems like the market is starting to move as late, late, late last night. Uh, center fielder Cody Bellinger and the Cubs are in agreement on a three-year, $80 million deal, Peter, with an opt-out after each season. So kind of a pillow contract. He gets to prove it. If he ends up playing unbelievably this season, again, he can opt out and then get maybe a bigger contract during the next free agency. And if not, he's guaranteed $30 million or $30-ish million a year for the next few years. Um, this kind of had Twitter going crazy here, saying that maybe the Jays, and looking at the price of this, maybe the Jays do a similar thing. They sign him for two years, 44, maybe three years, 70, I don't know, with similar opt-outs. And Peter, you've been on the record saying if it was something like this, you'd do it in a heartbeat. Uh, you have BK here saying Matt Chapman is a Blue Jay or a Giant. I think it makes all the sense in the world now. And again, it was only, I didn't really want Matt Chapman, you definitely didn't, but if you can get him for a one-year, two-year deal... It helps you. He would help you win, I think, in this uh, in this case, especially given this. I mean, it makes more sense than I thought. And we know there's been reports from Mark Feinstein and uh, Robert Murray saying repeatedly that the Jays are trying to get him, and maybe they're waited it out long enough, and uh, it may have worked out for the Jays. Yeah, we've both been on record saying that we'd have him back on a one, maybe a two year deal, and that could be the best bet for Matt Chapman at this point. Obviously, he's clearly struck out on getting that hundred and fifty million dollar contract. Uh, No pun intended there because he does tend to strike out a lot. But Matt Chapman is better than whatever option the Blue Jays have at third base this year. And and that's just the truth. You know that what you're going to get out of him. Obviously, the offense is nothing crazy. He'll never return to that form that he had in Oakland, unfortunately. At least I don't think so. Uh, But, yeah, I I do believe that the players that are going to slot into that third base position this year can give you something of similar value. But to have that assurance and to have that continuity on a daily basis with Matt Chapman, I I think that is kind of understated here. So, yeah, I would take him back on a one-year deal. But anything longer than that, anything longer than a two-year deal really is something that worries me from the Blue Jays because then that handcuffs the position and you have so many options there. I mean, Aurelis Martinez can play there going forward. Addison Barger as well. Uh, there's just a lot of options. Alex Bregman is set to hit free agency after next season, after this season. So you look at all these factors and tying that position down to a guy with declining offense and defense could be a little bit scary. But for the near future, for this season in particular, Matt Chapman is probably the best bet that the Blue Jays have. Yeah, if you get him for a one- or two-year deal, you don't have any of the risks that would that really come with Matt Chapman. Obviously, the decline is a worry on a five-year deal, but it won't matter. You look at the prospect blocking. If it's a one- or two-year deal, it also doesn't really matter. You can find hopefully find spots or make some trades for the other prospects. So I'm kind of all in on a one- or two-year deal. Maybe a two-year deal with an opt-out after year one, like Josh Goldberg says here. And Peter, um, it's something definitely to keep an eye on, but I think the Jays at this point seem to be finalists. I don't really know any other teams besides the Giants and the Jays. Maybe there's some other ones that have the money and are willing to drop it on a guy like Matt Chapman. And for Matt Chapman, it's obviously a familiarity thing. He played with the Jays the past two years and it's worked out very well. So any quick final thoughts before we uh, wrap up and uh, move on? I agree. I agree with that, Nick. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to see him on a long-term deal, but I think he helps out the Blue Jays much more than maybe those three guys would uh, that, that would be playing the position this year. Yeah, and his, uh, he also helped the young guys develop, especially defensively as well as they come up, whether that's a relevance, whoever it is. But that'll wrap it up. If you want to check out our video from yesterday, click on your screen now. We are happy Blue Jays baseball is back, even though uh, today's lineup was a little bit underwhelming. But that'll wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.